pyramid of circles is forming, that is triangle. And from here we can state these numbers as triangular numbers. One interesting fact about triangular numbers is that if you see the addition of any consecutive triangular number is equal to the perfect square. That is addition of this triangular number 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Addition of this triangular number 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. Here the summation is 16 and here 10 plus 15 is equal to 25. This interesting fact states about triangular number are correlated with the square numbers. These triangular numbers are nothing but some numbers which are used in some competitive examinations and other IT tests which are measured to test intelligent questions of students. This is all about triangular numbers. Hmm. My name is Shravni Dev and I am an FIVAC student. I am I'm from group Vidyan Prasar. Today I am going to be talking about Taylor and McLaurin series. Some of the prerequisites for better understanding of the concept are as follows. Basic understanding of functions, derivatives and factorials. What are Taylor series? In mathematics, the Taylor series of a function is an infinite sum of terms that are expressed in terms of the function's derivatives at a single point. The formula is as follows. In mathematics, before we use any formula comes the derivation. Following are the steps to derive the formula. I'd like to encourage all of you to try it yourself. McLaurin series. The general formula is fx is equal to f0 plus f prime 0 x plus f double prime 0 upon 2 factorial into x squared and so on. In general, it can be written as the summation of the kth derivative of function f at x equal to 0 upon k factorial into x to the power k, where k goes from 0 to infinite. How do we derive this formula? We can we have derived it already. After learning a new concept comes the question of practical applications. Following are a few examples. Evaluating definite integrals, understanding asymptotic behavior, understanding the growth of functions, and solving differential equations. Let us look at some examples. e to the power x can be written as the summation of x to the power k upon k factorial. Sin x can be written as the summation of minus 1 to the power k into x to the power 2k plus 1 upon 2k plus 1 factorial. Cos x can be written as the summation of minus 1 to the power k into x to the power 2k upon 2k factorial. 1 upon 1 minus x can be written as the summation of x to the power k. ln of 1 plus x can be written as the summation of minus 1 to the power k plus 1 into x to the power k upon k. I'd like to encourage all of you to try and prove these yourself. These are the links to the resources that I used to make these slides. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Gauran Kutele. Today we will see about theorem of triangles. But before, we know about basic concepts and various interesting facts about the triangles. So in the first theorem, we have the sum of the three angles of triangles is 180 degree. So according to this theorem, we have, suppose the measure of angle A is A, measure of angle B is B, and measure of angle C is C. Then according to this theorem, we have A 
plus b plus c is equal to 180 degree. So by using this theorem, we can find out the measure of third angle where we are given only two angles of the triangles. Now in the second theorem, we have if in the two triangles angles are equal, then their corresponding sides are in the same ratio. Hence, they are, they are they both of the triangles are similar triangles. So according to this theorem, we have let's say these are two triangles, triangles ABC and triangles PQR. And we have the condition where angle A is equal to angle P, angle B is equal to angle Q, and angle C is equal to angle R. So as per this theorem, we have AB is to PQ, that is AB is to PQ is equal to BC is to QR is equal to AC is to PR. And according to test of similar angles and sides are in proportion, then we have triangle ABC is equal to triangle PQ. My name is Sriram Shinde and my topic for today is quadrants on a Cartesian plane. A quadrant can be defined as an area or region of, of a Cartesian plane which is obtained when two axes intersect each other. This is a graph which represents the Cartesian plane. Here, this is the y axis, this is the positive side and this is the negative side. This is the x axis, here is the positive side and here is the neg uh, negative side. This is the first quadrant where both x and y are positive. This is the second quadrant where x is negative and y is positive. This is the third quadrant where both x and y are negative. This is the fourth quadrant where x is positive and y is negative. Suppose we have to find a point on the graph whose x value is 3 and y value is y. So first we locate the x point, x value 3, here it is, and y value 5, here it is. So this circle represents the point whose x value is 3 and y value is 5. Thank you.